Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Matt and I like video games. And today I decided I was going to make a video talking about Xbox exclusivity. So stay tuned. So last week, Microsoft dropped an absolute nuclear level announcement on the gaming industry, announcing that they have purchased ZeniMax Media for $7.5 billion, which is just an absolutely astronomical amount of cash. And if there were ever any doubts about Microsoft's commitment to the Xbox platform and ecosystem, I think this deal has erased any and all of those doubts. But this deal has brought about questions of Xbox exclusivity and whether or not these games will now be exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. So I figured I'd make a quick little video and just go over my thoughts on what I've been reading and seeing over this past week. So let's get into it. First of all, I think one of the things I've seen most this past week is people who are saying, well, there's no way Microsoft locks those games to Xbox and PC because they need the money they'll get on the Sony platform. And my answer to this is that I don't think these people understand or even fully comprehend not only how much money that Microsoft has, but how much they don't need Sony to make money. And that's not me dissing Sony as a company. I mean, I'm just stating facts. That is a fact. They do not need Sony to make their money. Microsoft is a literal trillion dollar company. They're not struggling for money by any stretch of the imagination. And people like to throw around the fact that PS4 sold 110 million units. And in all honesty, the PS5 is likely on its way to another monstrous generation. But let's think of the actual numbers for a second, right? PS4 is selling 110 million units. Seems like a lot, right? Well, it is. I mean, let me clarify that. It is a lot for a console. But console gaming makes up less than 30% of how games are actually consumed. I mean, the fact is that most gaming takes place on PC and mobile. And with game streaming now seeing a boost in popularity during this last year with the introduction of Google Stadia, I mean, that's a joke, but whatever. GeForce Now, Project X Cloud, and the recently announced Amazon Luna, it looks like there's set to be yet another competitor on the playing field with consoles, PC, and mobile gaming. And nowadays, the gaming industry is over 3 billion gamers strong. So when you really do the math, is 110 million really a lot? You see, Xbox is focused on much more than console gaming, and they have been for years now. What Xbox is really focused on is a little bit of everything. They want people to buy the Series X. They want people to buy the Series S, but they don't mind if you get a gaming PC. And they sure as hell don't mind if you're a mobile gamer now that xCloud is out in the wild. I mean, Microsoft isn't focused on 110 million PlayStation users. They're worried about the other 2.5 billion gamers. And next up, let's talk about how they're handling exclusivity with their other game studios. People like to point out that Minecraft is on every other platform as an example of why these Bethesda games will suddenly be there also. Well, first of all, Minecraft was already on all the other platforms before Microsoft bought them, so it wouldn't make sense to just cut out all the other platforms all of a sudden. But what about Avowed? What about Fable? What about Halo Infinite? What about the Initiatives game? What about Outer Worlds 2? What about Hellblade 2? I mean, I could go on and on, but my point is do you expect any of these games to come to playstation let me just go ahead and answer that for you of course you don't of course you don't expect those to come to playstation so why would you expect starfield or elder scroll 6 or fallout 5 it, it just wouldn't make any sense people also like to say that this was strictly a move to bolster the lineup of xbox game pass and they're partially right i mean this deal adds an instant boost of value to game pass just based on past bethesda published games let alone the unreleased least games like Elder Scrolls 6, Starfield, and Fallout 5. But ask yourself this question. Do you really spend $7.5 billion just for a Game Pass deal? And better yet, do you really spend $7.5 billion to turn around and cut Sony a check for 30% of every game sold on their platform? Listen guys, I, I'm not a business expert and I certainly don't have a degree in any of this stuff, but even I can tell you that the answer to both of those questions is a definitive no. Now does this mean that PS5 and future Playstations will never see a Bethesda game on their platform ever again? Absolutely not. Think of games like Elder Scrolls Online or Fallout 76 and even to a much lesser extent Wolfenstein Youngblood. These are all games as a service, and it makes sense for Microsoft to keep these games on as many platforms as possible 
possible because of the money they'll make on microtransactions. This also keeps those communities intact while keeping bigger games locked to the Microsoft platform. So all in all folks, this is a massive win for Microsoft and Xbox. People have said for the longest time that Xbox has no games and well, now they've got games. And now people are kind of salty. I mean, I've seen a guy even refer to Doom Eternal as Flop Eternal, which is funny considering it's almost consistently mentioned as a Game of the Year contender, but that's neither here nor there. It seems like people like it when Sony buys up studios, but they seem to get quite upset when Xbox does it. Maybe they just don't like competition? I mean, who knows at this point? All I know is that I'm excited as hell for the future of my favorite platform. And to end the video, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to ask who out there was able to secure an Xbox Series X or S pre-order. I got lucky and got mine through Microsoft Store after about 15 minutes of buffering and panic attacks at the checkout page. And honestly, I keep checking on my pre-order every day just to make sure it's actually still there because for some reason I'm like terrified that it's just going to disappear. And I mean, so far so good. It looks like I'm getting a Series X on day one, so fingers crossed. But let me hear what you guys have to say. Do you have any funny pre-order stories? Leave a comment below and let me know how you got on. Leave a like if you liked the video and please subscribe if you'd be so kind. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.